It's the last week of Made to Order March. We're opening up all the previous Made to Order products, including this week's Claude Slim and Lasso Link neck strap, where you can alternate two different colors. You can do alternating links, one side one color, one the other. This whole thing ends on the 27th, so get your order in. It's the only time we do it all year. So I'm on the hunt for my perfect casual sneaker where I'm trying to find a, a pair of shoes that's super comfortable, reliable, and doesn't look like I'm wearing flippers down the street. And here are my general needs, oh, <laughs> this side. Not that this has anything to do with it being my favorite sneaker potentially, but this shoe is made out of hemp, which is, uh, I don't know if I can say it on YouTube, you know what it is. Please don't demonetize us. So we're gonna cut it in half, run it through the test, not just to see how this ranks on my perfect casual sneaker board, and also to see if these shoes that are made from hemp smell like hemp or smell like hemp when they're burned, and also why would somebody want to use this material of hemp in a shoe, of all things. So first, who is the brand that makes this shoe? Sambas, uh, well, I think their full name is actually longer than that. What is it? Sambas Your Mamas or something? Sambas the Bombas. So Sambas the Bombas, they are a small brand based in Spain, and on their site, their little info bit says, after years of working in the footwear industry, we felt we could do more and in a different way. It all started as a family mission to find natural and respectful footwear, and we went for it. We spent years working out how to do it, not just to make them look great, which they do, that's what, in their words, uh, but more importantly, to make you feel like you're running barefoot in a spring meadow, as good for your feet as it is for the planet you're walking on. So what is the information on this shoe? Well, the brand is Sambas. The style is the Amapola. They weigh 12 ounces. They retail for $108 USD. They're made in Spain, and the way they position this is our premium hemp fiber insoles are removable the inner sole is also lined with organic cotton so you can amplify your experience without restriction. Uh, and then if you want a pair of these, check them out via links in the description. Maybe a better way to understand this brand is understanding their stance that they have against conventional footwear because they say it hurts you by the rigid sole prevents you from developing the muscles in your feet. The narrow toe crowds your toes against each other causing malformations and impeding the foot function. The raised heel unbalances your entire body, pushes it forward to counteract the unevenness. And finally, the thick sole interferes with the communication between your foot and the ground. So take that for what it's worth. I think there's great arguments for and against in the sweet spot. There's, there's no just one true thing when it comes to footwear. More importantly, what's with the hemp? I wanna know what, what it is, why people use it, what does it smell like when you burn it? First of all, what is hemp? Well, if you didn't know, hemp and uh, MJ, I'm gonna call it Michael Jordan for this video because I don't wanna get in trouble. Hemp and Michael Jordan are the same plant. The major difference is the hemp is a mixture of male and female. Michael Jordan, oh, I said it wrong. Its flowers produce less than 0.3% THC. Hemp plants also tend to be taller and, and contain more fiber in the stalk. So basically, if it's under 0.3% THC, it can be considered hemp. So it's far less psychoactive than plants made for that. So why would somebody want to make a shoe out of hemp besides it being this cool material that has some cool counterpart attributes as well? Well, hemp grows faster than cotton. Hemp requires less water than cotton. Hemp fibers are stronger and more durable than cotton. Hemp fibers can absorb more moisture than cotton. Hemp fibers become softer and more comfortable than cotton over time, allegedly. Hemp fibers can be dyed more than cotton. Hemp has a better antibacterial property than cotton. Hemp is a carbon negative plant. Hemp requires only half the acreage of cotton at the same yield. And finally, hemp doesn't need herbicide where cotton does. It's pretty clear that's a very bias in the hemp direction with a lot, not a lot to back it up, but those are the claims. So maybe eventually we'll do a true comparison. But the thing that I'm most curious about, first of all, does it actually just smell like just hemp generally if it, without lighting it on fire? If we give it a quick sniff test, it does not smell like my downstairs neighbor's apartments. So that passes that test. But what about when it's burned? Let's find out. And we haven't, we haven't done this test before recording, so this is news to me if this is actually smells a certain way. I'm trying not to get demonetized. Wow, it does not want to light on fire. That's a really interesting attribute. Cotton just lights on fire pretty easily. I'm gonna just take a little strand out because it's not burning very well. What do we got for knives today? Oh, Gerber again. This is my favorite knife. Check these out via the link in the description too. Okay, got a little strand off. Let's see how it does. There, it's lighting now. It smells just like cotton. It does not smell like my downstairs neighbors. Wow, I thought for sure it's gonna smell like that. But that's only part of the hemp in this shoe because we've got some other bits that have a lot more natural hemp that we're gonna test here in a sec. So what do I think of hemp in this shoe compared to canvas? Well, I do like that it's a really big, chunky weave. I like the durability that's gonna come from that. I like that it's a little bit stiffer. And really the only thing I knew about hemp before prepping this video is that it was it is allegedly more abrasion resistant and stronger than cotton. So that's just hard to be generally for me that likes to base my stuff a little more function based than form. So I like it. What about the inside? Because they, they said that it's cotton lines. So you think that they would do hemp lined on the inside too, because that's where they say it's like more antimicrobial, it has all those benefits, but it's cotton lines, which isn't a bad thing, obviously, but just if we're having a hemp shoe, it'd be nice if the whole thing was hemp to some degree. They have a really interesting insole. It reminds me of the barefoot boots 
insole where they have the edge binding. And I don't love that because it's gonna give you a high pressure spot, but it's topped with canvas. And underneath, it says it's five millimeters of hemp fibers. Got my buckle guy caliper, three and a half. So a little bit off there. First, does it smell like hemp? Does it smell like my downstairs neighbors before it's burned? Nope, don't smell anything. Okay, now we got a nice long strand. This has to smell like it, right? Because this is straight out of the plant. It's undyed. That lights up way more than the canvas. Oof. That doesn't smell like hemp. It definitely smells different than the canvas. Oof, let's see how the rest of this video goes. Straight to the dome. No, I don't smell, I don't smell any of the hemp smell in that. It just smells like you're burning a little bit of bark or kindling or something. It just smells like wood. So unfortunately, you can't just roll this up and uh, light it up at any point if you're needing a nice smell. So a pretty unique spin on an insole using some pretty unique materials. Is it so much better than, than foam that everyone should switch over to hemp-based insoles? I don't think so. I think most of the value that people are getting from this is from the subjective aspects of it, where it's more eco-friendly, all that kind of stuff, and less about the functionality. One thing that is super function-based I really, really like about the shoe, and what initially turned me on to it, was this is a cup sole that's made out of rubber, and I believe it's like a special kind of rubber. I don't know if it's just a misspelling, but it's a vegetal rubber that's four millimeters thick. I like that it's a cup sole, but I more specifically like that it's a cup sole that's sewn all the way around because it's probably glued as well, but that stitching is what's really gonna keep that bonded for a shoe that's so flexible and so articulate that if it wasn't sewn, that glue would eventually delaminate. Your whole shoe would start falling apart. And that's not what you want with a barefoot shoe. And I also like that it's it's molded. You can see that they purposely put flex points into the cup sole and high spots to give it the right articulation in the right spots. And it just looks pretty cool. It's got a little toe bumper on it. And as for the durometer, if I just put it on the heel here, 60 Shore. So at 60, it should be pretty durable. You know, it's gonna give you a good amount of grip. It's not gonna be as hard as a work boot, but not as soft as like a really soft rubber sole. But it is only four millimeters thick. So that's probably why they had to make it a little bit harder. So a lot of really interesting and potentially good things from the outside, but let's cut this thing in half, see if there's enough squish in there for my specific needs, and if there's anything else on the inside, and uh, how this ranks on my personal, what's Weston's favorite casual sneaker board. This is a really popular micro adjust belt. I think a lot of people misunderstood how, how it all worked and what it is, so we made a little embossed stamp on the back to give you clear instructions on how this works, and it just turned out really cool. So let me show you how this works and why people love it so much because this micro adjust belt came about because I was so sick of buying these nice leather belts. You buy it brand new, fits you perfectly. After a week, stretch it out just a little bit. Now one tight's too loose, one's too uh, tight, and you wish you had a hole right in the middle. That's what this does. It literally splits the difference between each of these holes by making a tiny little adjustment here on the back. So the way you do that, is you take this Allen wrench and you put it into the hex head top part of the Chicago screw. Now we've got them undone. So we're gonna take them out. And all we're doing is just shifting the holes to the next hole. So you can see there's a plus sign there. So if you shift it that way, it's gonna make it like half a inch bigger. If you shift it the other way, it's gonna make it half an inch smaller. And that is how you split the difference between one hole is too tight and one's too loose. Little teeny micro adjust, it makes all the difference in the world. These are really popular and we're just trying to build out our belt offering. So this is more of a casual belt, but stay tuned for more micro adjust stuff in a few different variations of belts. So check them out below. Thanks for supporting our business and everything we do, the handmade stuff we make here in the shop that support the YouTube channel. Plus you get handmade American goods made from American leather, made by us. What more could you ask for? Especially when it comes to making a belt actually fit you. So check them out below. Thanks guys. All right, we got it chopped in half, and even when we were cutting it in half, it did not smell like burning hemp. So let's see what's inside. So very, very ba basic on the inside. Very, very similar to the splays. The splays have just a little bit more foam on the inside, but similar thickness as the outsole. It's just 
exactly what you probably thought it was. It's just a very simple, basic barefoot style shoe. But does this pass all the requirements that I need for my perfect casual sneaker? Is it zero or near zero drop? Yes. Is there enough squish for me to be comfortable underfoot for long days standing and walking? Not for me. Some of you guys that like these shoes don't want anything underneath your foot. I need more squish, more like these limbs. I just need a little squish. I just need a little. I can't do it. It's too, too hard. Is it flexible and articulate? Clearly, yes. Is it gonna squish my toes? No way. There's there's plenty of room in there. There's plenty. There's room for extra toes in there. But maybe the most important, does it look like a clown shoe or do I feel like a clown wearing these? Because these brands do a really, really good job of finding just the right angle on all their social media posts and all their product listings. That they look really nice. And then sometimes you get them in hand and you're like, oh, these are wide, wide. And that's kind of what happened with these. They look really good in all the photos. And I have really narrow feet too. They're just, they're a little bit too wide for me. They, especially being bright red, obviously very clown color. I feel like they could, for me and my foot, you could take an inch off of that and you'd be a lot closer to what I'm looking for. Keep in mind, it's a subjective thing. That's why people are buying these wide toe box shoes for the width. I'm just looking for a very specific combination of some of these features. But I just don't think it's narrow enough that when I'm wearing this around that uh, it's not gonna go unnoticed by the ladies. So finally, is this my perfect sneaker? How does it rank on my board? Well, it's not my perfect sneaker, unfortunately. I had high hopes for this one, but I think the display looks a little bit better, but I like the materials and the stitch cup sole on the Sambas more. But if you compare it to the limbs, I like the, the midsole of the limbs more because it's actually have some foam in it. I like the toe box of the limbs because it's a little more narrow for my personal taste. And so for me, I'm gonna rank it right in between those two, right in the middle. But I really like what this brand is doing and it's gonna work for a lot of people. So if you wanna pair, check them out below. I like that they're using different materials and trying to put a new spin on this kind of a new industry of barefoot shoes and trying to differentiate themselves by combining high quality materials and and smart design with some of those eco-friendly, the bare, all the different ethics of the barefoot stuff, which had just a little more squish and a little more narrow of a toe box. And the most important question of this video and what I wanted to know the most, are you gonna get flagged at the airport walking through in these because of the hemp material? It doesn't seem like, it doesn't smell like that. It doesn't, when you burn it, it doesn't smell like that. It does still have a little teeny bit potentially of that active ingredient, but you'd have to fire up a, a whole truckload of these shoes to get much out of that. So I think these are completely safe. And like I've mentioned like five times, this is my subjective need of this style of shoe and the beauty of cutting stuff in half and showing you exactly how it's made and all the measurements is you don't really need my opinion to make your own decision. So let me know what you think and don't forget we've got the other couple of videos of the Finding My Perfect Sneaker and a bunch of other barefoot style shoes that we've cut apart over the last couple of years. Put links below. So thank you guys for all your support. See ya.